Um, let's, uh, let's start then. Um, last time we started talking about web pages and what constitutes uh, a web page. And we said that web pages can contain all sorts of content. But the, the content for a web page is really just contained within a plain old text file. It's just words. There's no, nothing fancy about it. How then does a web page or does a web browser distinguish like what's supposed to be a link and what's supposed to be a heading and what's supposed to be all this? And we determine that that is through tags. And tags are sometimes called markup. And it's just like literally when a person marks up their textbook with, with highlights and notes and things like that. What you're really doing when you're doing that is you're giving some extra meaning. It's not just an ordinary paragraph in the book. It's a paragraph in the book that is important for the final or is uh, something that you don't need to worry about because it's out of date or whatever. And the tags serve the same purpose as that. And we went over... I think three very basic tags to sort of form a part of a web page. We didn't form a complete web page yet, but we formed part of a web page. So what I would like to do is back up and, and pick up there, all right, about forming a web page. Um, so. We did it through Notepad. And we had mentioned that there are any number of other programs that you could use. The last Notepad++, which is sort of like a, a slightly better version. It gives you some line numbers and, and things like that. And there's, there's all kinds of other software. There's some software that lets you to sort of drag and drop things on the page. And we're avoiding those kinds of things, things like Dreamweaver. Uh, in this class. And the reason we're avoiding it is we really want to understand the nuts and bolts of this. We don't want to let the tool do the job for us. Um, there's any number of these tools that can help someone developing websites, but you want the tool um, to be under your control and not be under control of the tool. So the way you make sure the tool is under your control is really understand what's going on. All right? Then you'll know how to use the tool in, in the best way. So. To avoid any problems with that, we're just going to use Notepad, a tool that doesn't offer you any sort of help. All right, so you have to take control. So let's get to kind of where we were last time uh, in, in terms of putting tags uh, and paragraphs on the page for headings. All right, we talked about three tags, if I remember right. We talked about an H1 tag. which is a top-level heading. We talked about an H2 tag, which is a second-level heading. And then finally, we talked about a paragraph tag. These tags come in pairs. These tags come in pairs, where there's a starting tag and an ending tag. And the ending tag is distinguished by the slash in front of the name of the tag. So start H1 and H1. Anything between these two is considered to be part of the H1, which means it's a top level heading. Now, one thing that we're going to find throughout this course is that developing websites really is a balance of two sort of different skills. And that's what, in my mind, makes it a very exciting and interesting career. Because first of all, there is the design aspect of it. And the design aspect of it is like how you can make the page visually interesting. How you can use design to communicate your ideas. Uh, more effectively than simply just having a block of words on the page. Using the visual elements like color and space and, and fonts and things like that to really get your message across. Now, right now, 
We're not learning a lot about those kinds of things. So that's going to be put a little bit on the back burner. But I do want that to be in your mind. So for example, when I mean design, it's not just about like the colors and all that. It's about thinking what you need to do. So let's say, for example, I'm going to create a web page about my schedule for today. All right? I know, really exciting topic for, for not even for me, really, all right? But I can imagine it's not particularly interesting for you. But let's say I wanted to publish a schedule that says what I'm going to be doing today in case people needed, needed to find me, all right? Keeping in the spirit of design, it would be good if I thought through how that's going to look, all right? And I might say, well, my schedule looks something like this. I, I have, I might jot down and, and just sketch on a sheet of paper sort of what I want to do. So I might say Wednesday schedule. All right. First of all, I have CISS 216. CISS 216 consists of a lecture and a lab. And then I'll have a paragraph about the lecture of what I'm going to do, and then I'll have a paragraph about what we're going to do during the lab. Then I have a meeting. And I might have a paragraph about that. And then I might have, I'm going to stop at the grocery store. Now why anyone would need to know that I'm stopping at the grocery store, I don't know, but I'm putting it there to remind myself not to forget. All right. And I might put a list of the items that I want to pick up at the grocery store. And then finally, I have in the evening CISS 268, which also has a lecture and a lab. In other words, I've thought through what I want to do before I've started coding it. All right? I didn't just simply open up Notepad and start typing things in. I've thought through. And then I can look at this and I can determine what tags. Now we can make this page with only the tags that we know right now. All right. How many H1s would there be in this document? There'd be one. There's a top level heading. Wednesday schedule is sort of the top level title and everything else in this page logically goes underneath that. How many H2s would there be? There'd be four. Right? Remember, an H2 doesn't mean that it's the second heading. It means it's the second level heading. So if I was doing an outline, my outline might look like this. Wednesday schedule. Underneath that, CISS 216. Underneath that, meeting. Underneath that, grocery. Underneath that, CISS 268. Now, underneath CISS 216, there could be lecture and lab, lecture and lab. So this is the H1. That's the top level. These are all H2 because they're secondary level. In other words, you don't use an H2 because it's the second one on the page. You use the H2 because it's like second level, logically, if you're doing an outline. Now, what would be H3s on this page? Lecture and lab under both the CISS 216 and CISS 268. All right? So, and then underneath each of these would be the individual paragraphs. Now, paragraphs are just paragraphs. There isn't a P1 and a P2 and so on. So one common mistake people make with the headings, again, is to think that the first heading is H1, the second heading is H2, the third heading. It relates to logically where it fits in the structure of an outline. H1 means top level, H2 means second level, H3 means third level. Now this particular page doesn't have, only has rather three levels, all right? You have up to possibly six levels. There's H1 through H6. Yes? No. All right, because again, if it's directly under groceries and groceries is an H2, then it's an H3. All right. Um, one thing that sometimes people do, well, we'll get, to, we'll get to one common mistake people do. 
that's sort of related to the question that, that you asked. But no, it would be an H2 and an H3. All right. Now notice that, again, not have H3, and that's allowable. In other words, there's no subtopic underneath meeting. There's just a paragraph about it. All right. But you would not H2 to H4. All right, let's go and let's build this page. Uh, and we'll start off by putting in the tags that we missed last time. If you remember, I said last time we, were, we, did, we did a part of a web page. We'll, we'll do the complete web page this time. I'll type these in. And then we'll come back and explain them later. Notice as I'm typing it in, as soon as I type in a start tag, I type an, a, the end tag that belongs with it. Yep. And we'll, we'll come to that um, in a second, the reasoning behind that. We're using HTML5. Oh, mm -hmm. All right. These tags that we have here should be on every page that you make. All right? And let's go down and let's talk about what they are and what purpose they serve. The very first one is not a, an HTML tag, strictly speaking. It's what's called a declaration. And it's called the doc type. That essentially tells the web browser what version of HTML you're using. And in this case, this tells the browser that we're using HTML5. Now, you might say, where you don't see a 5 or anywhere in there? That just means you're using HTML5, the doc type that looks like that. This is actually much simplified from earlier versions of HTML, where the doc type is very long and involved. But that means we're using HTML5. This, because it's not a tag, it doesn't have an end tag associated with it. It's just a declaration. And it will be, should be the top line, the first line in any of your pages. The HTML tag indicates where your HTML page starts and ends. All right? It's sort of, uh, you know, the, the, the root tag. Everything, every other tag is contained within the HTML tag. And what do I mean when I say something is contained within a tag? I mean it's between the start and end tag. So notice everything is between the start and end tag of HTML. So everything is part of that HTML tag. Yes? Someone said question? Or maybe they said bless you. Okay. <laughs> All right. So everything is contained within the HTML tag. Well, we'll talk about CSS when we get to CSS. All right. All right. No, that's, that's fine. Uh, you can read through in the book. Uh, it actually will be part of the head tag. All right. But, yes. Okay, let, let's hold that off for a second. Did you finish up your question? Uh, yes, uh, do I have to separate that with XML? Well, can you think of a page where you would have a combination of HTML and XML in it? No, I can't. Okay, because there wouldn't be one. like a bad idea. Yeah, there, there wouldn't be one. All right. Gaining your question, does the head have to be on its, no, on its own line? And that's an excellent question. No, it doesn't. You have the flexibility to arrange the tags in a way that visually makes it easier for you to understand the page. I could, for example, put everything 
on one line and so on all right why don't I do that well because if I had to go back and change it, it's gonna be real complicated to read it it's gonna be very difficult to find where the tags are where the start tags are so you have the flexibility to lay out the tags in a way that allows you to understand the page and therefore make it easy to change so if you for example you could do this all right if you wanted to if you think that's straightforward and that's fine personally I, I would prefer to do it this way because then at a glance I can see everything that's contained in the head section all right I can see same thing applies as far as indenting goes I don't have to indent stuff but it helps about helps me understand the browser doesn't care about it so for example at a glance you know I could take my glasses off and I can tell you that this is part of this tag without even being able to read the words all right so the indenting and the spacing all that is called white space and the browser pretty much ignores it all right the, the spacing and the indenting that you put in is just to make it more readable for you uh, one thing that you'll find out whether you're talking about web development or other forms of software development is that a lot of the things that you do you do to make it easy on yourself to change it later all right because you anticipate that later on you're going to need to make some kind of change for this and if I need to change something I want to make it easy on myself so the indenting and all that there's some personal preference involved but the purpose of it is to uh, make it easy to read now for example I didn't I put the title all on one line because there's nothing else gonna ever be inside the title tag so we might as well put it on one line but I could spread it across multiple lines now to the question that was before about CSS and all that that also is going to appear in the head tag so I have that separated so I can easily pop something in if I need to yes this simply explains to the browser and, and tells the browser that my web page starts here and ends here yeah it's just it contains everything it's like here's the start of my page here's the end of my page all right here's an interesting uh, uh, there's an interesting um, side effect what if you do something wrong what if for example you forget an ending tag or what if you put in a tag that doesn't exist the and, and the interesting thing is is the answer is it depends sometimes a browser can figure out what you mean anyhow and it will display the page correctly other times your page will end up being messed up and we'll, we'll see examples of that going forward so your best bet to make your page look correct across all browsers is to follow the rules and do everything correct if you mess something up all right then it's kind of like all bets are off it won't necessarily be wrong but it could be wrong it's like if I gave you bad directions to get to giant eagle from here all right if I said you know go north on Abbey and then turn right on 254 all right some people might just might go and do that and drive for miles looking for a giant eagle all right other people might get to the light and say oh Giant Eagle's actually on the left. I'll bet he meant left and just got confused. All right, so browsers are like that too. If you give them bad instructions, sometimes they figure it out anyhow and they display the page correctly. Other times they mess up. And it really is a situational thing. Yes? If you mess it up and it figures it out, does it put it into the code? No, no, no. It, it assumes you know what you're doing and, and it goes ahead and does that. there are actually programs that will look at your code and tell you what it thinks is wrong with that but again even it, it won't 
correct it really and even them are sort of crude and you know it it'll give you an idea where the problem might be but it, it won't necessarily pinpoint and say hey you forgot to close this tag or something like that head section is information about the page it doesn't appear on the page itself all right in other words the title in this case is what's going to appear up here on the title bar it's not the body of the page. The body of the page is what appears in the browser window and that's contained within the, the, the body tag. Right now, the only thing that we're going to have in the head tag is we're going to have a title tag. Uh, in future classes, we'll have other stuff all right, uh, to go in there. All right, so let's go in and let's put the tags that I talked about for Wednesday schedule and so on. Let's just do this part of it and we'll go and we'll finish it out. So I have my H1 for Wednesday schedule, CISS 216, lecture and lab. Underneath this then, I'm going to put a paragraph that will talk about what is going to be in lecture. And again, it doesn't matter if I put it on, a, if I continue typing or put it on its own line. All right, that's again, that's white space. I'm going to do what I think makes it most readable. Okay. Okay, so there we go. We have um, our first set of headings and we have our first paragraph. So let's go and save this. Now this is something that, uh, again, I'll probably go over a few times because this is something that sometimes students get a little confused on as far as how to save it. So I'll go in and say File, Save. I have to change this from text to all files. I don't want to save it as a .txt file. I want to save it as an HTML file. So I will say all files and I'll type in my name, Wednesday.html. And I click save. Now, here's the file. I know I did it right because Windows knows it as a web page because it displays the Internet Explorer icon as the icon for it. Now I typed in Wednesday.html, but all it says is Wednesday. All right. That's because a file name is really uh, consists of two parts: the file name itself and what's called the extension that says what kind of file it is. And as a web developer, you're going to want to turn those file extensions on so that you can see them. Now depending on the version of Windows that you have, um, 
You can do it uh, a couple different ways. For this one, it's under Organize, Folder and Search Options, View, and then I turn off Hide Extensions for Known File Types. If you need a hand doing this in lab, I can show you how to do it because it's different in Windows 8. But essentially, there's some option somewhere that allows you to turn off Oh, I'm sorry, to, 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 to show the file extensions, to turn off the hiding of file extensions. So now when I do that, I can see the full name of this file, which is Wednesday.html. All right, now I can view the page in the browser. <clears throat> Important thing to keep in mind, another thing that's confusing for some students, is that they think that there are two pages that there is the notepad page and there's the browser page. It's one page that we're simply looking at two different ways. It's like there could be a photograph of you, then there could be an x-ray of, of you. All right? it's, there's just one you. It's just two different ways of looking at you. All right? This way is sort of like the x-ray. We see inside the contents of the file and we see the nuts and bolts of really what's going on and what the tags are and so on. Yes? No. Well, well I'll show you how to, what to do then. You, you simply just need to open the file in Notepad. And we'll, we'll look at that in a second. All right. And now I can double click on it and I can view it in the browser. All right, and there are the tags. Notice that the H1 is the biggest. You know, makes sense. So the biggest headline is the most important, the top level. The H2 is second biggest. And then the H3s are the third biggest. <clears throat> now to your question before, you asked about could you skip like from an H2 to an H4. Sometimes students think that's a good idea because they might say, hmm, those H3s are too big. Let's make them a little bit smaller, and if I make them H4s, I'll make them smaller. That's not a good practice. What we will learn later on is that you can use CSS to control how big H3s are. Because logically, that's the third level heading, so it should be an H3. The fact that it's too big, that's simply the way it looks. And we'll find that anything concerning the way it looks, we're going to put in the CSS code. All right. So again, two files, or um, two views of the same file, rather. So I could go in and maybe add something to this page. And normally what I do when I'm working on a web page is I'll have it open in the editor and I'll have it open in the browser. So I can make that change, save it again. Notice the second time it doesn't ask you anything about like how to save it. And then I can simply go and hit refresh. And then it has the new stuff. Pardon me? Your preferred, uh, My preferred editor is a plain text editor and not anything with a graphical interface. All right. So there's no notepad's perfect. All right. Now to the question before of what happens if I close it in Notepad. Well, I have to open it back up in Notepad. How can I do that? You can do that a, a number of different ways. You can simply open up Notepad. And you can drag the file onto it. And there it is. Or I could go into Notepad and click File, Open. I have to change it from text documents to all documents because that's not a text document. And then I can click on it and open. All right. Now the question was raised, or I'm sorry, not, not the question was raised. The statement was made earlier that if you forget an end tag, what happens? And I said it, it depends. 
let's play around and let's, let's get rid of some end tags and let's see what happens. Let's get rid of the end body tag. And what happens? Don't notice a difference. Let's get rid of the end title tag. Wow. That's a problem. Page completely disappeared. I usually per semester get a couple of students like, where did my page go? And panic and they're running around the room and their arms are waving. And All right. What is the problem here? Yes. No. I missed an end tag. So what does a browser do? Browser looks and says, here's the start of my title. I'm going to display starting here the title until I hit the end title tag. Well, guess what? There ain't no end title tag. And therefore, if I look up here in the title bar, it doesn't know what to do. So again, in one case, I had a missing title tag. In the other case, I, had a miss, I also had a missing tag. One made no difference on how the page looked. One made the page disappear. So all bets are off. All right? Could work perfectly, could not work at all, and everything in between. All right? So um, again, and it could vary from browser to browser. Just like if I gave you directions how to get the giant eagle, you might figure out the correct way, but another student might follow my incorrect instructions. All right. Now if I go and put the end title tag back in, we're back in business. Notice, again, when I say the title, the title appears up here. So that's the title. The H1s appear as part of the body of the page. There's another concept related to tags, and that is the concept of nesting. And I talked, and I alluded a little bit to that without really defining it completely. I talked about a tag containing another tag. So for example, in this case, this is part, this tag, the title tag is part of the head tag. The H1 is part of the body tag. When I say a tag is contained in a tag, I mean it starts inside of a tag. All right? So in other words, the body tag goes from here to here. The start of the H1 is contained within that body tag, therefore you could say it is nested within that. And the rule is that if a tag starts inside a tag, it needs to end inside that tag. So, this would be incorrect. All right. Why? Because the H2 starts in the body tag, but it ends within the H3 tag. So there's overlap there. So that is an example of improper nesting. What happens if you nest things improperly? Well, again, all bets are off. The browser tries to figure out what it thinks you meant, and it may succeed or it may not succeed. Yes. It would depend on the browser. This, strictly speaking, does not violate the rules of nesting. This simply includes an H3 tag as part of an H2 tag, which doesn't make any sense. 
This would this this is this is a, a different kind of penalty, in other words. Hmm? Well, let's look. Since this is a violation of the rules, it, it doesn't make sense to say it would make sense to, right? <laughs> I, I don't know if that's, uh, that, that, that sounds silly, but... Um, oh. It did it correct. All right. This is one of these things, like, it's like the weatherman, you know. After I see what it does, I can explain why I did it that way, but before... I see what it does, it's unpredictable, who knows, all right? What do you mean? Okay. Okay. Excellent question. Excellent question. And that comes into what are called special characters. All right. All right. So let's say we wanted to put in a I'm going to put another paragraph here. Why? Because I want another paragraph. I want a space between that. We will talk about the H1 tag. All right. So let's say you wanted to do that. This isn't going to work, right? Because it's going to think that that's an H1. Yeah, I have two end paragraph tags. Thank you. So if I go and save this, notice what happened. It didn't recognize that I wanted to display the letters H1. It, it interpreted it as an H1 tag. And what more, it thought the rest of the page was an H1 tag. Because notice that, that H2 is, is giant as well. So how do I do that? This is where you can use special characters. And this is for even other things that are not uh, on the keyboard. For example, if you want to do the trademark sign or the copyright sign, there's a special character for that. In this case, what I want to display is I want to display the less than tag and then the greater, or, oh, I'm sorry, the less than symbol than the greater than symbol. So I do ampersand LT semicolon ampersand GT semicolon. Now I didn't make those up. Those are predefined. They all look the same way. They all start with an ampersand, they have some letters, and then they have a semicolon. And that will do what I think you want it to do. And that is, today we'll discuss the H1 tag. Right. Now, yeah. Ampersand, LT, semicolon is less than, ampersand, GT, semicolon. I could also do a copyright, ampersand, copy, semicolon. get the little copyright symbol. If you want to do like for British pounds or the euro or the yen sign and all that, if you just go and Google, pardon me? You can find them all, exactly. Special, special characters. HTML special characters and here's an example of things that you could do. 
Um, there's like inverted question mark for, for Spanish. There is the pound, the euro, registered trademark. The accents. You could actually write what? Uber. Yes, you could write Uber. This is, this is the, um, and, and you can write the names of many heavy metal bands using, uh, using this because they love the umlauts, all right? That is a really fun word, right. Okay, uh, onward and upward. There, there is one more tag I want to talk about today. I think we have time for it. And um, that is the link tag, all right? How do you make links to another page, all right? The link tag's a little different than the tags that we had so far. And if you think about it, it makes sense that it's going to be different, all right? If I say I want a link on my web page, what else do I have to say? I can't simply say I want a link on my web page, right? You have to say a link to what? All right. It'd be like saying, hey, can you go to my car and get me something? Well, which one's your car? You have to give more information. So it's not enough for me to say I want a link. I have to say I want a link to somewhere. All right. And that comes into an additional thing about HTML tags, an additional thing that some HTML tags have, and that's called attributes. Attributes are additional information about the tag. So far, none of our tags have had attributes. They're all just the tag. Because these really didn't need any attributes. But a link, you know, H1 is a top level heading, okay, that's all I need to know. A link, however, I have to also specify, well, a link to what? Attributes look like this. And we'll go over the attribute for a link to Google, let's say. The link tag is the A, and the A stands for anchor. And I didn't make this up, so don't ask me why they call it A for anchor. All right, they, ju they just do. And then you have the text that's going to be the link that the person's going to click on. And I'm leaving intentionally a blank space here, but so link to Google will be underlined in blue, and if I click on it, it'll take me to Google if I put in the right attribute. Now, the attribute is the href attribute. And within that attribute, you put in the address of the page that you're going to. All attributes look the same. They have a name of the attribute, they have the equal sign, and then they have enclosed in quotes the values of, or the value of the attribute. If you're going to someone else's website, you need the HTTP in front of it. And usually what I do is I simply go and copy and paste to make sure I get the attribute right. So let's go and let's add this link attribute to, or I'm sorry, this link tag to my page with the attribute. Now notice that the attribute is part of the starting tag. In other words, here is the starting tag from here to here. You don't need to put the attribute on the ending tag. And the attribute is not a separate tag. It's part of, there's simply a space, and then you have the value of the attribute. So let's go in our code. And if I don't know the answer, I will. And again, I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure I get it right. So I'm gonna go to Google. This 
Just paste, copy and paste the address there. All right. If I don't know the answer, I will Google it. The words Google it and the exclamation point will be the text that I can click on. So you need to specify between the start and end tag for a link the text that the person's actually going to click on to make the link happen. You then have a start at ta a tag, end a tag. Part of the start a tag contains a href attribute. So let's not, pardon me? Okay. Did you injure yourself? Or? Okay. Hope you're okay. All right. Let's go and look at it. So now we'll go and close this. If I don't know the answer, I will Google it. And notice as I put my mouse over that, I can click on it and it takes me to Google's page. Mm -mm. If you don't put in any anything in here, there's a link there, and uh, notice, ah, yeah, right there. If I click on it, but that's not terribly user friendly. All right, <laughs> I've actually seen sites that have something like that um, to like get to like the administrative logon. There's a link that's like way up there and most people wouldn't even think of, of looking for it and you can click on it and you can get to it. And even if you did happen to stumble across it, you wouldn't have the user ID and password so you couldn't get on. But I've seen that done as a trick for that. There would also be a good way to do it if you were um, let's say you're writing an entertainment page, you know, a page that dealt with a movie or whatever. We wanted to throw in some Easter eggs, you know, just some things where, you know, hey, if you click on, the, you know, if you click right next to this, you know. But in the normal course of things, you'd want to make uh, a very descriptive text in there so that people could look at it and see. You could. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, if I wanted to say, if I wanted the address to be the text, I would have to type in the address there. Like I would say, HTTP something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. In other words, images, which we'll talk about probably uh, next week, although we have a short week next week, so I, I, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, to make an image a link, you simply put the image tag between the start and end um, link tag, and then the image becomes a link. Like a lot of companies will have like their logo is like a link to their home page. So that image tag would simply be between the start and end of the uh, A tag. Questions about this? This should, if I'm not mistaken, be enough for you to do the first assignment, I think. All right? If not, uh, feel free to ask any questions. Um, here's like the good news and bad news. <laughs> the good news is tags, starting and ending, nesting, white space, attributes, that's about everything to know about HTML. So we know it all. So we're just going to take it easy, maybe meet for breakfast some 
Monday and Wednesdays for the rest of the semester. We just won't tell anyone and we're done and you'll get your credit. No, I'm just kidding. All right. As they say, the devil's in the details, right? We have to learn so much more about so many more HTML tags, HTML tags for lists, for images, for tables, for forms, all right? And we have to learn CSS because we don't want all the web pages in the world to look like this with plain white background, things like as an outline, and so on. We want to add some visual uh, information to it to make it more appealing to be sure but to also help the user focus on the things that are important uh, and, and really get the message across that we're trying to convey. So we have plenty of work to do, but the good news is at least in concept, we've covered the main points about HTML. All right, we'll see you over in lab.